Hi, welcome to Gifted Guitars. This week we are continuing our work on this West Side Story themed guitar. Today we are working on the back of the guitar. If you missed any of the previous episodes, we're pretty far along on this. So you want to go back and check those out and then come back here and watch this episode. This is going to be a fun one today. We're going to work on the back of the guitar. As you can see right now, it has a gloss black finish. We're going to do something really cool to the back of this guitar that is going to make it undoubtedly a West Side Story guitar. You can kind of tell from the front but you're gonna really be able to tell from the back. I'm building this guitar for Rachel Ziegler, who's going to be playing Maria in the new West Side Story that is directed by Steven Spielberg. I have been so inspired just by the little bits of this movie that I've seen. It looks beautiful, it looks really cool. This shot, this is taken directly from a shot in the trailer of the silhouette of the city at dawn. I think it's beautiful, I think it's romantic, it's fantastic. And then the back of the guitar is gonna have the logo that they have, it's a little grittier, a little darker, and I like the duality of that. There's a story in the West Side Story guitar. I've got to figure out how to get this exact design onto the guitar. And the first thing I'm going to try is to use a Cricut machine to cut out this as a stencil and put it on the back and then spray it with a vintage white lacquer. This is deceptively complex. All the brickwork and stuff means that there are little tiny lines, there's little tiny scratches and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to need to transfer onto the guitar and hopefully the Cricut machine will be able to do that kind of detail, but I don't know. I've never really pushed it that far. So I've got two different theories on how I'm going to do this. And the first one I'm going to try is just pulling this image, putting it into the Cricut program and seeing if it can cut it out out of some vinyl. So that is our first step today. All right, I've got my design in here and we're gonna try and cut it out over here. All right, that took way longer than I expected it to and my sheet of vinyl masking was not quite long enough, so it cut a little bit beyond. I think I can still work with it though. I can mask the, the edge of it by hand, but uh, yeah, this is a really <laughs> intricate design. And now I have to do something called weeding, which is taking out all the little bits that I don't want put onto the guitar. So that's gonna be a real painstaking little delicate procedure that I don't think I'm gonna finish tonight because it's late, but we might as well get started. So here we go. All right, it's midnight. I gotta stop. <laughs> I got this far, but I will continue this tomorrow. All right, day two of weeding. Let's get at it. That took an incredible amount of time, but I, I got it. This is our stencil. Now we've got a couple things working against us with this stencil. First off is that it is a very delicate stencil. There's a chance that it could break anywhere along the, the line of things that we're going to try and do with it. Another thing working against us is that we have to transfer this onto the guitar and then back off of the guitar and there's potential for it to get messed up. Basically, we're gonna take a sticky piece of vinyl, put it on top, try and peel it all off and make it stick to that sticky piece of vinyl, and then stick that whole thing onto the guitar, and then try and peel off the sticky vinyl, leaving all the delicate little bits of this stencil on the guitar. And even if we got it all the way on there, when I spray the guitar, there's a chance that it's gonna bleed or do something weird because it's such tiny, tiny, fine detail on this. 
a lot can go wrong. But we do have one major benefit here, and that is that this design, this logo, which was really fun to work with, by the way. I, I love working with other uh, logos and designs and stuff like that, and seeing how they were designed and seeing like the intricacies of it, I love that. Because at face value, you're like, oh, this is just like some words. But when you get closer to it, you see the work that's gone into making it look like bricks, and not only that, making it look like weathered bricks and getting that contrast on there. It's a really cool design, but it's a weathered, broken, gritty design and that could work to our benefit here it, it, if it's not perfect it looks intentional hopefully <laughs> there are a few things that i'm nervous about but at the end of the day there's also this sort of leeway that we have because it's kind of a gritty design all right this is our transfer tape All right, I uh, made a little operation bib here for the guitar and tomorrow I will take this outside and spray it down. I did quite a few light coats of the paint on uh, this design and it's dry now, so let's see what we did. Alright, I need to stop right here and just talk about how cool that looks. <laughs> that looks awesome. I am so excited about this. It turned out better 
than I anticipated. There's a little bit of like overspray and stuff in places. I love this. It's so cool. I'm very far from completing it though. There are a few places where there's still really tiny thin pieces of vinyl on the guitar and I was trying to get them out with the little tool that I was using but it would scrape the paint off of it. And at first I thought, oh, the, the paint must have changed like the chemical compound of the vinyl or something and now it's just flaking away instead of peeling off. Uh, but now I'm realizing that I was just scraping the paint off of the vinyl and the vinyl is still there in some of those channels and I need to find all that and get it out of there because if it stays on the guitar, it's gonna cause problems with the final finish. So I'm going through very closely with magnifying glasses and trying to figure out if there is any more of that vinyl that I need to scrape out and getting it all cleaned out of there before I move on to the next part of this guitar build. Right now I'm cleaning up the binding. There was a little bit of overspray and I couldn't quite mask everything perfectly on the binding so I just let the lacquer hit it and I'm using an X-Acto knife or a craft blade to just scrape off any extra lacquer that went onto the binding and I love how it's pulling out the shape of the guitar. Traditionally on the headstock of the guitar is the logo of the company that makes the guitar. For example, this is my Fender Stratocaster and it has the Fender logo on the headstock. Gibson, Epiphone, Ibanez, you get the idea. The company name goes on the headstock of the guitars and for a while I've been trying to come up with a logo that I thought would say like gifted guitars on it. And the more I thought about it, the more I, I didn't like the look of gifted guitars on the headstock of a guitar. I tried a bunch of mock-ups in Photoshop and nothing really spoke to me. And so then I started playing with my last name and I made my the B in my last name into a guitar and I like had done a bunch of stuff and I started to zero in on a logo and I showed it to my wife and she was like, you already, you already have a logo. On our other channel, Ballinger Family, we use a certain logo which is our last name and then it says family on it and that's on our merch and our stuff and it just I can just put that on the guitar so that's what I'm gonna start doing I've kind of avoided it in the past and not put something that said like I made this guitar on the headstocks of the guitars in the past and now I'm starting to realize that it's not really a, a vanity thing it's not like oh look at me it's you know I built this guitar it's more a reminder of the gift to the person. I feel like it kind of makes it more special that they have one of these things and there's only a few of these things out in the world. And that element of it I think is just is is neat and it took people pointing that out to me both in the comment section and in real life for me to to realize that. So I don't know if this is gonna go on every headstock in the future. I love the Hender Telecaster that I did for my mom. I don't think I'd change that at all and I love the the skull that I put on uh, Eric's guitar. So, I mean, it depends on the guitar, I guess. But this logo, I think, is gonna go on, or at least my last name is gonna go on every guitar from this point forward. Just as a way of saying, like, I, I put myself into this for you. It, this is a gift for you from me. That being said, I've got to make a stencil of that logo and put it onto this guitar.
The inside of that A gave me some trouble, but overall, much easier than <laughs> the bricks. So, now I need to transfer this onto the headstock of the guitar. I did that with the airbrush and a little accident happened off camera. Like I turned off the camera and I was cleaning out my airbrush and I messed up. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about it because I don't want to just show like things working here. I want you to know that there are things that don't work and that that's okay and that there's ways around that and, and growth that happens from that. I did something kind of dumb. I was cleaning out my airbrush and I had a little cup that I had the paint in and I had a jar of thinner and I was pouring the thinner into the airbrush, swishing it around, pouring it into the cup and I wanted to clean out the tip of the airbrush. So I just put the airbrush into the cup and started up the air and obviously, at least it should have been obvious to me, when you put a bunch of air blasting into a cup that has like paint and paint thinner in it, that's gonna spray everywhere. That's gonna splash and splatter. And that happened right over the guitar. Luckily, I was able to very quickly get all of the drops of gold paint off of the guitar, but <laughs> my heart stopped for a second there and I had it all over my face. I cleaned it up off of my face, but you can kind of see it on my arm here. This is the hand that was holding the cup. It just, it went everywhere. It got all over my face. I'm lucky it didn't get in my eye. I wasn't wearing safety goggles at the time. I usually do when I'm doing stuff that could splatter, but I didn't even think about, obviously, about it splattering because I was doing it like right over the guitar. I do see in the comments sometimes like, you're so talented, you never mess anything up, you never, like, no, <laughs> no. Stuff like this happens and just because it didn't happen on camera doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It, it was an embarrassing mistake. Uh, luckily the guitar survived. Luckily I didn't get any in my eye. It, there, there was a, a few tense moments in, in, in the garage here. <laughs> Where I was dealing with stuff frantically, trying to make sure that nothing permanent happened to anything. Luckily nothing did and, uh, and we can move on. But I did want to point it out. Alright, the paint is dry here. Not coming up at all. So let's peel this off and see what we did. I spent most of yesterday trying to get as many coats of lacquer on here as I can, the clear gloss lacquer. So now it's got like a nice shine to it. It's starting to look glassy smooth, at least on this side. This side, I don't know if this type of wood's gonna allow me to have like a real glassy surface to it. It's a little more porous than this side. But this side's already looking pretty great. So that's what I was doing yesterday and today I've left the guitar alone. I had to leave it alone for 24 hours before I can do a level sanding. This is just a really light sanding. I'm trying to get kind of the high peaks, the high points 
knock those off of the guitar so that tomorrow I can go through a whole day of spraying it again and hopefully by sanding it and getting another layer on top of it or several layers on top of it we'll end up with a really nice hard surface that I can polish and make glassy smooth. The reason it takes me all day to do the clear coats on these guitars is because I have to spray it and then I have to wait one to two hours before I can put the next coat on. And so I'll spray it, hang it up, leave it alone, come back, spray it again. And I didn't record it this time because it's, it's not super interesting, it's just clear stuff going onto the guitar, you can't even see it. So we're sort of fast forwarding all of that. I'm gonna sand this and then tomorrow we'll put another uh, round of coats on it and hopefully that'll be it for all of the spraying, hopefully. Over the past three days, we have sprayed this with many, many coats of the clear gloss lacquer. And now it's time for the hardest part of any guitar build, waiting. I cannot touch that guitar for another two weeks, which is very difficult. It's nerve wracking because I don't know if the lacquer is going to crack or do something weird or react with the paint that's underneath it. I want to be working on the guitar. I, I enjoy working on guitars and to not be able to touch it for a long time is frustrating. So to me, this point of doing nothing is the hardest part <laughs> of any guitar build. But lucky for you, you don't have to wait two weeks. Next week, we'll be back with another video. If you have already subscribed to this channel, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me. It is a great way to support the channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I hope that today I've earned your subscription. It really does mean a lot to me how many of you have subscribed and supported the channel. I love going through the comment section. I read your comments. I give hearts to people. There's like a creator heart that you can give. And if somebody's comment really means something to me, I will let them know by giving them that heart. I do read the entire comment section. So thank you so much for those comments. Also, let me know if you like this video. There's a way to do that. You just click the little like button and it lets me know that you like what I'm doing and I'll keep doing things that you like, hopefully. Or at least things that I like and hopefully our likes will collide in a good way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's episode and I will see you next week.